I need your opinion on this. Here's a video. I'm going to play it for you. Okay. Walt Disney's creative philosophy. We've talked a lot about Disney, how the, the whole company has changed quite a bit. Quite a bit. And here's a video that was unearthed uh, about Disney talking about his creative philosophy. I'd like you to comment after you watch this video. It's about 50 seconds. Here we go. Were your films principally designed for children? Well, no, you have to appeal to the adult or, uh, well, the, the adults have the money. The children don't have any money. Mm. <laughs> but so that there was nothing childish in your intent? No, we, we sort of uh, we sort of designed the films to appeal to ourselves. Yeah. And uh, we're our own censors. Within the studio group, if we do something that isn't right, we hear from the, the various members of the staff that just isn't right. You can't do that. And uh, I, I never test a film beyond the studio. Of course, I have enough employees there that are not act actively engaged in the, the creative phases that uh, they would be what I'd call a non-critical audience. They'd be closer to the public. So I test my films with my own people. But yeah. I enjoy making all kinds of films. Alan? Wow, an old white guy. The rantings of an old white guy. I mean, just listen to him. Yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Letting people watch it and talk about it to to appeal to adults that uh, not dumb down to children. Yeah, old white guys. I tell you, they don't know anything. Uh, we have a serious <laughs> comment. No, not be serious. This is like what we've been talking about. It's like like the opening comment there of. Um, of uh how yeah we don't dumb down movies it's for adults because they have the money you know th that's what i said about kong versus uh, godzilla x kong you know it's like you you don't yeah it's for kids but you don't need to dumb down these things for kids you can actually tell good stories and i think you know, you're talking walt disney who created the first animated feature you know he yeah it was for ch children but he was speaking to adults in it uh you know, and it's it, it just seems like today that's that's the whole thing. It's you know why why should we listen to these old white guys, who have, who have been in the trenches, you know, who was doing this stuff a hundred years ago, and and we fail to realize that there's great wisdom behind that. Uh, how do you think that compares to the company now? Yeah, I mean, who who are they appealing to? I mean, it's just they've got the message they want to tell, uh, and. You know, it doesn't, you know, we, we, the fans are an afterthought, you know, the, the idea that, that, you know, that they think they, they can make money by just shoving aside the fans and telling a, a modern tale, you know, for a, a new story for modern times, uh, it, it'll be the downfall of this company when they realize that, you know, at, at some point, the money's going to run out. And uh, unfortunately, Disney's too big right now to to feel any financial pinch. And uh, and the more they shove us fans who are more than willing to shell out our money, uh, the more they push us aside, uh, you know, the, the further the spiral will begin. You know, I one thing I wanted to mention in the D files was that, um, you know, Jennifer Lee came in and she got rid of she wanted to make wish and honor to honor the Walt, legacy of Walt Disney. But the problem was, is all the events leading up to that point, she had set aside all of the, she had pushed aside all of the veteran uh, animators and artists, the, the people who knew the legacy of Walt Disney. She got rid of all of them. And then she tried to make a movie that, that, that was to, supposed to be honoring Walt Disney. And there was no one there left who knew how to do it. And that's why you got the crappy movie that Wish was. And uh, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, we, we, we talk about this every week, uh, our, everything we loved as a child, everything we loved growing up, uh, they've, they've taken it over and they turned into something that, that we hate. Right. Uh, it's sad to see, uh, another thing happened. I gotta show you this, Alan, mm -hmm. I saw gone with the wind in theaters, gone with the wind came out as a part of a fathom event and, uh, I love love that movie. 
haven't seen it on the big screen since I was a kid. Uh, I've seen it, you know, on video. But I went to the theater, saw it, and they had this in front of it. Now, this isn't oh, no. actually um, had in front right here. This, it's a little disclaimer. Okay, this isn't what it is. But they had this paragraph. It said something different. It says, this program includes negative depictions and, or, and or mistreatments of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now. Here's the difference with Fathom Events. That sentence, these stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now. It said, these stereotypes were racist then and are oh. racist now. I, I was like grabbing my phone so I could take a picture of it. I missed it. And then I looked it up. It's not anywhere online. This one is from Disney. So this is actually, I found this. But the phrasing, when I saw the film at a theater in, you know, from Fathom Events, and it's not Fathom Events choice, okay? It says these stereotypes were racist then and are racist now. Uh I it felt very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I, you know, just and I'm looking at it and like, yeah, of course there are wrong moments, but if you're a human being, you recognize that they are wrong. Now, if you are sticking with this philosophy, you know, going forward on other movies, do you put up do you put up a, a disclaimer in front of movies like Taxi Driver and say, Murder is wrong. It was wrong then. It's wrong in this movie. This these characters are murderers. This is like when you look at like every Scorsese movie about a mafia family. What are you gonna do? Crime is wrong. It was wrong then. Mm -hmm. We are gonna if this is where we're going, you are gonna put this warning in front of every movie, every movie because characters do bad things, but we recognize they're bad. Your comments, Alan. Yes, uh, I, I'm. I'm not surprised, but I'm just saddened that that we've come to this point. Uh, you know, it, I, when I dig deep into this, it, it it is the subtle removal of history. Um, sure, we did bad things a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, thousands of years ago, and. You know, this is uh, this is more or less the the next step before you start burning burning books. You stop. Uh, you start destroying. Or, you know, removing old stories or stories of the past. Yeah, you know, we are people. We've evolved over time. You know, our our views of morality are, have been shaped over the centuries, uh, over the millennia, and uh, you know, you know, it's it's you know, if I were to put the conspiracy hat on. Uh, there, there just feels like an attempt to remove our past, and uh, and to teach this generation, you know, what we believe is is right and wrong today. Um, you know, you can, yeah, the depictions of people were were racist, um, but you know, oddly enough, it, it was probably normal at that time, and that's how people, you know, people acted, and to to, you know, cast judgment on it, on our history. Uh, it's a very yeah. dangerous thing. I'll just say that there are a lot of movies where people have are racist in their behavior. Mm -hmm. But the point of view of the audience to look at that and say, you know, like uh, just to see it and you know it's wrong. It's mm -hmm. the, the point of doing it sometimes is that discussion. Like the characters in yeah. uh, Godfather or um, Goodfellas, right? They do bad things. Are you going to put a, a warning in front of that saying these characters are doing bad things? And they're not, I mean, what? Where does it stop? Is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm. You know, I, history is so important. It is so important to understand where we came from. You know, to for this is okay. So we wicked little letters. We talked about the diversity. The the it's 1920s England. Um, you have an Indian woman who's uh, a police officer. Uh, you have uh, a judge who's black. It, it wasn't like that then, you know. And and for us to pretend that it was diverse in 1920 and not talk about the racism of 1920, not talk about you know where where blacks and brown people 
uh, and Asians were at in 1920 is, again, we're rewriting history. Look, there, I can go, I, you know, someone had me watch uh, The Reluctant Dragon on Disney Plus, and uh, I was pretty shocked about some of the Chinese stereotypes that were in that movie. But it was also, you know, it, it, to me, it was uh, uh, also an indicator of, you know, where the Chinese were at, you know, in 1940s, you know, America at that time. And to see how, you know, how Walt Disney viewed it, I, I wouldn't claim, I would never claim that Walt Disney was racist. Um, but, you know, he, that was the way Asians were at that time. And, and you know, rightly or wrongly, uh, you know, his depiction, uh, you know, yeah, I felt a little uncomfortable by it. But it was also a reminder to me of, you know, where my grandparents were at when they were in America at that time. And, uh, you know, I, I, as, as much as I might have felt uncomfortable about it, it was important for me to know and understand the context and the history of my family at that time.